All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Look Mum, I'm Hustling podcast, live and direct from a, a drizzly Sunday in Sydney. We're watching Ooh. the uh, new season of Full Swing last night. Well, you were reading your romance vampire novel, and I was watching Full <laughs> Swing. <laughs> vampires in it. Fantasy. It's The Court of Thorns and Roses, which is like one of the biggest selling fantasy series, I guess, in ages. Um, in ages. In ages. Yep. Yeah. Um, How many books are there? I actually don't know. I'm up to book number two. I think there's um, like five. For sure, there'll be a vampire at some point. Yeah. Pro- so you I don't can't know. say with certainty there'll be no vampires because it's it's fantasy and surely there's a vampire in that world somewhere. I don't know, maybe. But it's like it's apparently it's top rated, got heaps of good reviews and stuff. And they've recently just a new one came out. So obviously they're still being made and... I know, everyone raves about it, so I just wanted to see what the big fuss was about. Anyway, well, you've seen what the fuss was about when it comes to vampires and fantasy romance, and I was watching Full Swing, and I was contemplating going for a swing on the back nine today, but it was a bit grisly, <laughs> so I'm just trying to remember all the <laughs> golfing nine. lingo. You don't even own any golf clubs. I don't even... You go um, and you rent them. I'm pretty sure you can just... Rent you up. can rent them, yes. Yeah. yeah. But I've, I've said multiple times, let's go to a driving range. It'll be fun, and you're just like, nah. Driving range is... Different to playing golf. I know, but I think it would be fun. Like, I would be more than happy to try and play golf. But it's the same thing over and over. You just smack on the ball. At least so, with the. About the company. S- <laughs> no. Uh, I'd rather hit balls with myself, to be honest. All right. That, playing that the golf- drink almost went everywhere. <laughs> playing golf itself. I've, I think I've played golf like twice, but there's more of a challenge, a bit of strategy. You know, yeah. you got to work around trees, get out of the, the reeds. When was the Hit second the time grass. you went? Into the, the bunkers. I know one of the ones you t- talked about was when you were in high school and you got like the, everybody banned from playing golf or something, right? Yeah, and we went <laughs> one other time in the early 20s and okay. not very good. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a lot more fun than just going to the driving range. Okay, fair enough. So I, I'm not interested in doing it at all. I was just trying to have an intro to the podcast, so I guess. So you don't want to play golf at all? <laughs> no, I'm not interested. What's the other one that you wanted to play? It's like badminton, but... Not handball. Pickleball. Yeah, pickleball. Yeah. I'm, I like tennis more than golf. If we're talking about Netflix sporting TV shows? TV shows that have me interested in new sports that I'm yet to be interested in. Yeah. Uh, tennis is more at my alley, I think. What's the tennis show one called? Um, Breakpoint. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. And then Full Sweep. Well, Nick Curios was on uh, Theo Vaughn's podcast the other day and I watched that as well. Is that the one where you were like stacking clothes and just laughing out loud? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the other room and I just kept like hear- hearing this laughing and I get you, you do laugh quite a bit but like when I want to know that you're laughing out loud like it actually must be pretty hilarious so maybe I have to maybe just listen. anything outside of my normal ni- life is just a comedy to me hilarious maybe, yeah. maybe you just don't make me laugh enough maybe I, I do make you laugh out loud sometimes so <sighs> usually from my own like silliness but that's fine it's a rare occasion no yeah, it's at least once a week <laughs> so uh, I was actually going to watch the tennis this morning but it wasn't um, broadcast anywhere what kind of tennis is on oh it's just like a smaller tournament. Okay. In, I think it's in the US somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, Not one of the big opens? No, it's just like a small tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Well, I think um, Carlos Alvarez was attacked by bees in it yesterday. I don't know the words that you just said then. Carlos Alcaraz? Right. He's like the youngest. He's going to be the new Novak Djokovic, basically. The right. guy that's going to just reign supreme for decades to come. Was he in the Australian Open? Yes. Was he the you, super, Was he the young dude? Do you have a photo up? Can I change it over? We'll have a video even better. Oh. Let's have a look. Attacked by swarming bees. During Indian Wells. What a horrifying thing to happen. He's playing Alexander Zverev, your favourite guy. Alexander Zverev. You watched him play a month ago. Oh, I don't know. I didn't pay attention to the names. I should have, but Lexus didn't. Lexus presents right. tennis on Sky. Would, uh, Is that a five-minute ad? Oh, no, it's a news article. Let's have a look. Look at all the things swarming around him. So they're, they're bees. bees. Yes. Yeah, oh, my are, God. Wow. Well, bees are these that are circling ahead. <laughs> Look like flies. What the hell? With bees here. They pause for wine. Please come in. How distracting. It's more peligroso. Oh, yeah, that's the dude that I... Apparently, he's not a very good dude. It's fine. Play cannot continue. Please pause for a while here now. <laughs> pause for a while because, sorry, we've got bees. How random. I know. Letting you inside Scary. the stadium. Look, no, there's tons you. of them. The bird and the bee. Oh, my gosh. God. It's a... Uh... <gasps> Director said he is on top of things. It's today. like literally a swarm. That's crazy. It is pretty crazy. Time. Imagine if you're allergic. Yeah. And you're just trapped in that crowd. I know. Is that a drone? Uh, no, it'll be like a camera on, oh, on, on the wires. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what the flies are on. Yeah. The bees are on. Fuck. Wow. Yeah. 
Maybe the uh, queen, or I don't know how, the, how they Just sort of navigate. I guess there's must be one I main mean, bee the or the queen there, or something. They will follow that thing. That's um, landed there, and the rest of them are coming to ah uh, to protect, to protect or yeah. surround. Yeah, interesting. So uh, I was going to what he played this morning, but uh, it's not on. It's just a lower end tournament in yeah. Indian world. I think it's in California, perhaps. Surely there'll be some sort of subscription channel you can go to. That yeah, would but I'm not it paying it. subscription for tennis. Yeah. Come on now. Fair enough. Pick up ball. Pickle ball. Pickle ball. Yeah, not like pick up ball. Pick up ball is pick up ball different. Pick up ball is what you do when you finish playing with your dog. Right, you pick up the balls. Yeah. yeah. If your dog is too lazy to bring it back. Fair enough. That's what actually. Uh, pickle ball is just uh, basically tennis on a smaller court with mm-hmm. more of like a. It's like a cross between like squash and tennis, right? No, everyone keeps saying this. Squash is against a wall. Yeah, no, but it's like it's like a small court though. Squash is yeah, but, a small court. Yeah, I- it's like not against a wall. I know. That's what I'm saying. Cross between tennis and squash. Because tennis isn't against a wall. No, it's tennis court because you're playing across a net. But yeah. But it's a smaller paddle. It's a it's a paddle. Yeah, like squash is a smaller paddle as yeah, well. Yeah, but there's no wall. Yeah, that's why you say it's a crossover. It's 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 like it's like merging. So it's like if tennis and squash had a baby. It's like you ping got pong. Ball. It's ping pong and tennis. So if ping pong and tennis had a baby, is that better? Yes. Stop saying squash. It's, it infuriates me. Does it? As a new pickleball fanatic, <laughs> I, I don't agree to your simple My terms. demonstration or simple. My terms of words. Yes, I don't. Okay. I don't just you, you're frustrating me now. That's well. That's you need to be in control of your own emotions. I so. prefer to play against the wall than uh, with a person, but that's not what pickleball is. Fair enough. You need more people. If someone says you've been a bad girl in school, go and sit in the corner and look at the wall. Are you going to go look at open space or a wall? Because that's what pickleball. No, they used to ask you to sit outside the classroom. Really? Yeah. Hmm. But I was, I was a good girl. Thank privilege. you very much. I was a good kid. I just know because I was in, there was a, a, like a naughty kid in my class and he got told to sit outside the classroom all the I time. I thought you went to an all girls school. The primary school I'm talking about. Oh, interesting. So you never got um, kicked out. What's the, what's the word for kick, kicked out of school? Expelled. I was going to say terminated. That's a bit extreme. No. I was surprised I actually wasn't like had a conversation or anything because I used to call in sick heaps. You used to call in sick yourself? Yeah, like in year. Like you in- used to physically call. Yeah, I just need to not go in and then forge like sick notes from my mom. In primary school? No, high school. Like in year 12. I did that. I was actually, I had a notice of I'm something I'm asking my mom's signature, so. Yeah, I didn't go a bunch of times and I think I was on the cusp of not finishing year 12 because mm. I didn't go so many times and that would never, it was never a reasonable excuse. Yeah. I wonder what I was doing. I weirdly flew under the radar for some reason. So like other kids would get, or other girls would get like told off because like you couldn't have colored hair or anything like I was that. the same. Um, I had like bright red hair. It wasn't natural. It had natural hair tones. And then someone else had something similar, but they had to dye their hair back as well. Yeah. And then like, obviously I'd call in sick a lot, but I, my mum was never like called in or whatever it is. I think because I had like divorced parents and I went to a Catholic school and that was kind of like a, yeah. So I never really got told off or anything. You were amongst the, the bad kids, but you, uh, you fly under the radar. The key is to be like the second or third most disruptive kid in the class. But Not I'm- the first, because you're always going to get uh, pinpointed. But, like, my circle of friends weren't even the bad kids. Like, one of my girlfriends was school captain. Is that a good cover? That's a good cover. Yeah, yeah. Like, my, my, and, like, one of the other girls was, like, a nerd, um, a math nerd and stuff was in, like, doing the advance. And she's, like, an engineer and stuff now. The What's other it? one was, like, a, um, was, like, artsy and, like, she was, like, super popular. Like, everyone loved her and stuff. Like, I was, it was a very strange but, like, eclectic group of friends. Yeah. So, you never got expelled? No. Interesting. Yeah, never got pulled into the principal office. Flew under the radar. That was me. <laughs> I don't know where to go from that, to be honest. No, that's fair. I was just saying, I was just, I was a good, I was, I was polite, probably. I was a nice kid. Just you talked your way out of it. Um, no, I was just polite all the time. Polite person. What happened? What, what changed? I'm still polite. I'm very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Trust yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. No, I am. Why uh, do you think I do all the talking to like strangers and stuff most of the time? You just stand there and I do all the, the social stuff. That's me. Is it? Yeah, I do the social talking to people. Just say if we're so in a group. So you blatantly. Inadvertently calling me antisocial. No, you just you just don't have the the time or the patience for like short like petty talk or whatever. I don't have the patience. You took thirty minutes to get going for this podcast. We were talking about money and Bitcoin because you're reading like this hectic book that seems so complicated, but you are like sort of dumbing it down for me, which I appreciate. No, oh, well, I dumb it down for myself first, and then yes. I further dumb it down a little bit for you. Yeah. Um, but we're talking about dumb. money for like double, twenty minutes. Double dumb down. It's just about gold. It's a good podcast and- name: Double dumb. Double, double dumb. dumb. Double dumb, double down. Mm, that's too many Ds. Double dumb, double down. All right. This is fucking <laughs> is a bad 10 minutes of podcasting. Bring up a news article or something, please. Um, <laughs> You're the one who's got like some one saved. So I've got 
Let me think. I can remember off the top of my head. So I read this article about how they're saying. Apologies um, for the first ten minutes, guys. Just, that's fine. It's not one of time. those weeks. Not one of those weeks. You know. Not one of those weeks. We'll, we'll make it. Make it up. Okay. It's because we had like a like a slow day yesterday. Um, doesn't happen very often, but it was kind of just like just getting. So stuff our brains done. haven't caught up with the the body sluggishness. No, because like usually on Fridays, because we're filming on a Sunday today. Usually on Fridays, we're like bam, bam, bam. We're in that fast paced hustle kind of like mindset. Okay. And then so yesterday we had like a slow kind of like chill day. We like slept in this morning as well because obviously like our bodies needed. So it's whatever. the ramping, the not even the ramping. It's the tapering off at the end of the week. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe we don't record on Sundays ever again because this is woeful right now. Well, it's woeful if you think it's woeful. You make the best of the situation you have, my friend. I'm trying. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> See, made you laugh. <laughs> I'm laughing at just as like I just want to just just talk about sleep and being sluggish and slow makes yeah. me want to be even more slower. I thought coffee number five today might mm-hmm. help. Hasn't helped. Coffee number five. At least four. I'm gone for three hours and you have three at least coffees? Four, at least four coffees. Oh, my gosh. Right. I go and set up a TV for my All mom. Right. You clearly don't have anything to talk about. So TikTok is a bunch of TikTok news going on this week. Is that where it's the Australia thinking about banning it as well? No, that's boring news. We've mentioned that at least three times. No, because America like, was banning it and Australia is being like, we want to copy the Americas. No. Well, I mean, if you let me finish my thought. Okay. Um, go on. I think we've talked about... These potential bannings of TikTok, a half dozen, not even half dozen, probably like two, two or, or three, three times by now. And it's exhausting because nothing ever happens with it. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to just keep talking about what ifs. It's all hearsay. It's hearsay. I think they're going to ban it in Wyoming or something at one point. Mm-hmm. And literally these articles, they're interesting from a, a clickbait headline point of view. Mm-hmm. But it's usually just like one senator that's got a, is bereaved and has some, you know, emotional investment. And they want to get TikTok banned for some reason. They keep probably just spend too much time on it. Because their niece spent too much time on it or something, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I don't really want to give it too much energy because mm-hmm. it hasn't gone anywhere in the past. Mm-hmm. So it's probably not going to do it again um, for me anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but this article is interesting and it has, it's not mm-hmm. loading now because we haven't paid for some sort of news. Some sort of news site. I'll see if it works. Hey, Businessinsider.com TikTok growth collapsed. Life getting in the way. So this is from Business Insider. TikTok's growth rate. So it's something a bit different than just they're going to ban it. Mm-hmm. I got to say, thank. Mm-hmm. 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 TikTok's growth rate has collapsed. Life may be getting in the way for its younger users. Let's see if we can actually read this article before we're getting slammed with ads and paywalls. In one important measure, TikTok didn't grow in the final quarter of 2023. In the US, it actually went in reverse. This is shocking for an app that has experienced rocket ship expansion since the Chinese tech giant ByteDance launched it in 2016. Can't believe it's almost 10 years. The question is why a few folks might be deleting the app. More likely, there are simply no more hours left in the day for people to watch more TikTok videos. This is especially true for young users who are now entering a new busy life, a busy time of their life known as adulthood. So basically, people are getting on with shit. Yeah. So this is probably the most interesting part of the article. Uh So it's a chart showing the global usage, daily average users on different social media apps. And I'll just make this large so you guys that are watching, you can kind of see the Mm -hmm. visual representation. Um, So it's a chart on the x-axis. We have uh, the first quarter of every year since 2020. So we've got 2020, 2021, Mm -hmm. 22, 23, and then right now, 2024. Mm Mm-hmm. And on the y-axis, we have year-over-year year percentage change in global daily average users. So not it's how much it's growing year-on-year. Year. Gotcha. So most of the apps, uh, we've got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, have all sat around, uh, well, Facebook not so much, but the other ones are sort of usually between about 10 and 20% year-on-year year growth. Yes. Which means... They've reached their ceiling, the full capacity of how yeah. many people are going to potentially come on. Well, even like Facebook is very steady across. So they reached their cap like before 2020. Well, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the continued growth would just be new kids that are now getting 15, 16, 17. And then an even smaller proportion of older people that are getting into retirement perhaps. And like, oh, I may as well finally get onto Facebook and start. It. So it's like there's not that much more room for growth mm-hmm. for those. Yeah. 
Uh, but we've all heard about TikTok and the explosion. You can get millions of views on your first post uh, and just the wild thing. We've talked about TikTok a lot, actually. There's probably at least 20 episodes we've talked about um, doing live streams and monetization. Yeah, and well, different- it's a massive social media platform. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so basically since 2020, it's kind of been on the decline. So it started at about 60% year-on-year growth, peaked at about 85, 90. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's slowly kind of dropped off since then and then... Two years ago, 2022, it's kind of it's a massive, just massive drop, dropped off massively. Yeah. So it's kind of reached its ceiling. Mm-hmm. There's, it's going to fall in line with the other apps in terms of how much further it can grow, which is just an interesting point of reference for uh, the conversations we've had about TikTok in the past, where we're at now, and then what's to come in the future. Very- so like, the, the users aren't going to grow that much more. No, it's like it's super interesting considering a lot of people are trying to use it for, I don't know, like income and just trying Brand to- Brand building. Exactly, yeah. But it's just been that massive drop off. Like a, it's probably got maybe like COVID or something. So as people aren't working from home as often, don't have access to, I guess, infinite scroll or maybe the awareness around infinite scrolling has gone down. So it's a bunch of, it's all those factors and then the aging of the- the demographic. demographic population. Yeah. Well, because like that's like that's what happens, right? So usually it's all the younger people jump on an app and they're the ones that kind of fuel it. You know, that's what happened with Instagram. That's what happened with Snapchat, all that kind of thing. So TikTok's on the way down. Is there another app that we don't know of that's kind of like where people are gravi- all the young kids are gravitating towards? You would hear about it by now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's all an interesting dip here at the Q4 2022 of below 0% for X Twitter. That would be the exodus when people are jumping off when we started doing podcasts again, where Elon Musk kind of took over mm-hmm. uh, and then it's popped up and now it's dropped back again. So it's it's actually losing users. Up and down all the time. Don't be yawning. Sorry, my bad. You get a slap on the wrist every time you yawn. <laughs> 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 all right, so that was an interesting conversation and, they, and then as well the, uh, the news going around right now about the push to get it. TikTok either banned or they kind of potentially might force – Bite dance to sell it to a, a US yeah, gotcha. enterprise. Interesting. Either way, I don't really care. I, I go back and forth with TikTok because I want to tap into it as a social media platform to yeah. like help expand the reach of the posts that I do do. Do do? The do do. Yeah. Um, which is not very often, but then it's like. And discovery and all that kind of thing, right? Then, because you get shown to such a wider range of people. I just don't feel like it's going to have longevity. So it's like, uh, yeah, it feels like. It's a smart decision to make to add that into your content um, strategy in terms of where you're posting and things. But then is the extra time worth putting into it knowing that it's kind of capped out now and there's always this ongoing debate of is it going to be cancelled? Is other users there organic or is it just uh, um, the platform and the metric kind of pushing videos out? Like is it really fostering connection and community building or is it just purely just throwing everything out there and hoping people watch you like you you can't build long-term legacy or foundations on there i feel so it's like i'm just always in this this limbo stage state of like is it even worth it i don't use it at all um so it's like i don't it feels like it'd be dumb not to use it but then you use it and you're just like this is kind of pointless my time can be spent better elsewhere that makes sense especially for you like i don't really use it at all but for you you're not very much like a short-term sort of thinking person you're very much like how is this going to benefit long term so if you see it as such a short-term thing then your brain's just like doesn't even want to invest any time in thinking about it whatsoever i need to have the roi and that's not like in terms of likes or followers it's just like someone said i think it was on the rich roll podcast you know what ROI means, right? Return on investment. Yeah. Someone on there said like to reframe it away from a uh, financial outcome and, to, and reframe it in terms of ripples of impact, oh. which I liked. And it's, it's something that makes you think a little bit differently because it kind of is the same thing. Return on investment is like, what do I get back or what, like, what do I get back for my efforts? Mm-hmm. Whereas ripples of impact is kind of the same thing. It's like what you get back is the impact from your effort. So it's kind of in the same vein. But, but it's more fulfilling having, to think about it that way. With less numbers and revenue and, and figures attached to the actual outcome. Yeah, more value-based. Like that's a heaps better way to think about it because if you're if you're not in it for monetary gain and you just want it to, you know, impact the world in some way, like ripples of impact. Impact. So that's what I, that's how I think about my how my time is spent on a platform like TikTok. Mm-hmm. Like is the ROI there? Gotcha. Whereas like to say if you're doing like a how-to 
or something super informative on YouTube, that's going to have a greater impact than just like some sort of short term little funny vid. And because it's been proven that it's it's been around for 10, 15 years, it's you're adding to an existing library of which people are confident in using that platform for another 10 or 15 years. Yeah. I don't think there's that many people that are confident and bullish on TikTok being around 10 years from now because there's just always this speculation. It's Chinese run. There's always these senators and politicians like trying to pick it apart. It's just like there's too much friction involved. So like is the fr- is the amount of reach and virality linked to the platform worth it? Like for me, it's just like it's, I don't know, I just couldn't be bothered. Yeah, but who's to say like American run ones are any better? Like I guess. Well, that's, that's a lot of the argument as well. Because yes. like we're Australian here, so American and Chinese run, it's both foreign to us regardless. It doesn't have Australians' best interest at heart at the end of the day. Like they're just, all they want is your attention. So it depends if you have your attention, if you have any attention left to give, feel free to give it to them. But I don't know, like it's just not going to be, it's all very short term, all very short term. So yeah, just, it's just interesting to know that it's kind of, unless you know about this article, Mm -hmm. you would just think that it's still on the up and up. It's still rising, it's still rising. But, like, the data is showing otherwise. Yeah, it's becoming not, like, the biggest social media platform anymore. Like, it used to be, like, the the biggest. And although it might be dropping year on year, that doesn't mean the potential reach from a post is dropping. It just means the new users coming onto the platform. Or new, the amount of active users is, is still increasing. Any any positive number over 0% is still growing. Yeah, but it's, it's just not like stabilized. It's stabilizing out. It's a stabilized mm-hmm. rate of growth. Yeah. Um, so you can still, that has nothing to do with the algorithm and being found is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. Fair enough. Until so, you, I guess you have another like generational boost or something and you have a lot more people well, come on. The, there is no generational boost. We've talked about populations and stuff before. They're on That's the true. decline. Aging, yeah. demo, aging demographics in all the Western countries. Um, we're going to have like a, an elderly retirement crisis in the next 50 years where a huge percentage of the population is at an age where they're not in the workforce and mm-hmm. they're going to require whatever kind of elderly care. Yeah. So those people, like the po- percentage of the population is going to skew towards older than it is younger because less people in our generation, or we're having less and less kids in this generation now essentially. So is there won't be that these big gigantic waves in the future. Yeah, fair enough. And I guess that's why... A lot of people talk, I think in America they call it the 401, we call it um, a super here. So like, I mean, I was talking about it, my mom today, like even by the time that she's 70, she's not going to have enough in there to retire on regardless. They're going to need some government help. But if there's less people paying taxes, that means there's less money available to help those people. So All the taxes go up to cover it. Yeah. Well, that means, all right, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And I'm reading that Bitcoin book at the moment and it's like, it's, it's kind of terrifying. You're in a big predicament. Yes. Like a big predicament financially, economically with the, the printing of money and just inflation. Petrol is crazy. That's just like all these little things stack up and real estate bubbles and all these things stack up and it's like 20 years from now is going to be very scary times. We need to own some stuff before then, you and I. We need to have some sort but of... But even then, even then, you still got to gotta spend money to maintain the things. Yeah, that's true. It's all going to cost at the end of the day. We'll just get, we're just going to buy some... Actually, I won't say. No financial advice here. <laughs> um, but speaking of population, I've seen this. It was in one of my newsletters that I subscribe to. Mm-hmm. It is the largest city throughout history. So it's basically a a map of the globe um, with the, I guess it would be a population. I don't know if it it says largest city. So pre-modern estimates, um, figures are based on urban area, not official cities. So it's not even population based. It's more the size of the city, I believe. Right. And if the cities are quite, they weren't around for long, they're not showing them either. Hmm. So basically it's a a map of the globe um, of the last 5,000 years. Mm -hmm. And it basically be different colors representing the size of cities. And I suppose there would, there's no point in growing a city if the population staying the same. So it would be in correlation with the population growth as well. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting to see the regions that have stayed stable and had, uh, you know, have there's cultures, decades, or not even decades, centuries mm-hmm. of cultures maintaining different lands and areas and then where new civilizations have popped up. Right. And this kind of plays into that theme of economics and populations and things as well. I just thought mm. this was super interesting. It came out like four years, three years ago. Yeah. 
Um, you can find it on YouTube by just typing in the largest cities throughout history every year. Um, it is a 10 minute video, so we don't watch the whole 10 minutes. So I'll just speed it up into double time. Yeah, get through some good stuff. Skip through some, isn't it? I wouldn't say skip through good stuff. <laughs> skip uh, through to the good stuff. Sorry, my bad. See, so, times two. And at the bottom, it has like the ranking of. Oh, it is population on the side here. Interesting. Okay. I'll turn the volume down a bit. Yeah. So it's basically showing all these little green spots um, through the Middle East, mm -hmm. around Babylon and things like that. This is at 1000 BC. And kind of there's not a, much happening outside of that. There's a little bit of activity in South America. And then China starts, or East Asia starts having population growth yep. at around 300 BC. And this is when they probably would have start finding artifacts and all that yep. kind of thing as well, right? So this is Alexandria, the Roman era, like all like Rome and Egypt and stuff is like, this is Alexander the Great or the ancient Egyptian stuff that we know about now. And uh, I wish we could play it a little bit faster, but. Well, it's a, it's a long bit, like it's just showing how it like slowly grows, which is super interesting. But not not much is happening in terms of the size of cities outside of um, Rome and that area around Egypt and Turkey and then in different parts of Asia and India. Yeah, you can sort of see like the, where the purple, so like the Americas in the Pacific and like where Europe is, it's like a clear like trading path almost, same as like, East it Asia be, uh, just and America. It's more centered around the equator, I guess, too. Yeah. That part. That's actually interesting because there's nothing really that far north or south. So no. it could just be the fertile nature of the climate. Yeah. In terms of being able to speed up uh, agriculture and things like that. Yes, yeah. Just probably would have been well, the premium climate for it, 100%. Well, the better the agriculture, the better the Resources. quality of life and stuff is as well. I mean, just populations can grow because you're living to an older age and things like that. Yes, yeah, because if you've got, like, obviously food and nutrition and all that kind of thing, it'll help out a whole bunch. And also the, I mean, these are all relatively close here between Europe and Asia. There's the Silk Road is allowing the transportation of goods from east to west and things like that. Um, I mean, at this point, we're only at 750. What's CE? Uh, that'd be AD, essentially, right? Yes, yeah. Um, parts of China, that's at the bottom corner there, 600,000 is the population. So it's not even like at a million population no. yet. It's still quite yeah. small. Very, very small. Uh, but yeah, you can see everything here is pretty much along that Silk Road route, with the exception of some places in yeah. like Mexico. So there's no trade routes from Mexico to this, yeah. the greater continents here. And the IRQ, that's Iraq, right? So that's that just booming yep. at the moment. Around that Baghdad area. Yeah. And then it's obviously decreasing, maybe because like wars or something, right? Decreasing the population. Uh, or like famine. Just there's so many different factors. Yeah. Climate, wars. It could um, be natural to Yeah, okay. Maybe just people spread out to different regions and things yeah. like that. This is not to say this is with the only people. There's other people living on the other other places in the planet as well. These are just yes. like the largest. Yeah, the largest because they're not including anything that's like obviously smaller. Yeah, and I should should note as well, it's not showing like the Australian Aboriginal population or the mm -hmm. Native Americans and stuff because there's probably no data to support that at the time. No as data, and there's like it. They, they also, I think I saw here, they don't show any cities that weren't around for too long either. So obviously they would have maybe had some that would have a massive boom and then go down. But yeah, there would probably be no data at all, especially with the nomad tribes and stuff, right? Because they're just going from place to place. So now Paris is starting to come into the scene. Oh, that's right. Because yeah, Paris is like massive for ages. And now we're at about 1400 AD. Yeah. China's still growing this is like we're just giving like sporting commentary here i know um but like the interesting thing now right 1500 almost and mm -hmm. there's nothing happening in america there's not much happening in africa there's not much happening obviously in russia because of climate and things like that yeah it's oh. still all centered around south uh asia like india uh, where china and beijing is and then um the tops of africa with egypt and mm -hmm. And uh, Middle East and then Europe. So it's just interesting, I think, to zoom all the way, not zoom out 100 years, zoom out a couple of thousand years and yes. realize 
oh, we haven't been around for a long. We're at not all. doing. There's not much like that. We, we're like we're offering. Like not that we're offering. It's just like we're so in, insignificant when it comes to mm-hmm. the world and time. Well, just generational knowledge and stuff, right? It just blows me out. Yeah. So now everything kind of reset. So the graph on the side went from one million to two million. Mm-hmm. So all the dots got a lot smaller as we move into bigger scales of numbers. Ah, true, true, true. Okay. Like China has kind of stayed relatively stable that whole time. And Constantinople is yeah. something I'm reading about in the Bitcoin book at the moment as well. London's coming into play. So we're at 1750. On mm-hmm. uh, the bottom chart, most of the uh, the top seven, we got four of them are in China and Japan, and then f- we have Great Britain, Turkey, and France. Mm-hmm. So this is what five hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. That's the yes, eighteen hundreds resets again. So yeah, so you can tell whether like the most longest like where the where culture has existed for so 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 yeah. long and now 1800s 18. we have new york popping off yeah that's just like but that like it pops off fast it looks like it's just recently and it's just like grown heaps so yeah. all of a sudden it was like in 1800 it was nothing going back to 1841 nothing 18, nothing well yes. nothing when it comes to it on this graph it, it hasn't yes. reached 500 thousand population Mm -hmm. so it's in seventh and then all of a sudden it jumps to fourth third and then it starts spreading from east to west yes chicago so in like yeah 100 years it went from like seventh to second place which is crazy where all these other countries like kind of stayed stable that whole entire time well you can see like beijing's not there anymore it still has a population it's just not as big. Oh, there's, a, there's a cap. It's the same as TikTok. There's yep. a ceiling. They're still growing, but you can't grow at 100% year on year on year. It's like, okay, mm. the growth rate is going to be now 10% every year or yep. whatever the number is. But I wonder as well, because like obviously in New York, a lot of people traveled, traveled to America as well because it's like the land of the free well, yeah, and the I mean, opportunities. Italy and like how much of the population started like Italian immigrants and things yeah. like that, European, Irish immigrants. So and, look, and it's not that far across that o- that ocean there. It's a pretty short distance yeah. relatively. So that would have played a part in the boom as well. They would have come over, had their kids there. Massive. So now West Coast America is popping off. This is 1900s. Mm-hmm. So 80 years ago. Yeah. Osaka, Tokyo, booming. Mm-hmm. And now Sydney's popping off. Yeah. And now we've moved up a scale again, up to uh, the biggest scale is 60 million. Mm-hmm. So we have New York, Tokyo, London, Osaka, Paris, Moscow, Buenos Aires, all the places that we're kind of familiar with now, mm-hmm. 70 years ago. Like, it's crazy. Look how big Tokyo is for the size of the island. Yeah. Gigantic. 1968, yeah. Super interesting. And now... At this point in the 2000s, everything just booms all together as the emergence of the internet, Ooh, trade routes, not even yeah. trade, just trading of information faster. Technology, m- yeah. S- speed of light, uh, not lightning, speed of light, basically information traveling mm-hmm. um, instantly to every corner of the globe. It's just everything just boomed from like 92 here, like 88. Everything just like blows up real yeah, so fast. Yeah, 2000, like so much more. Yeah. Crazy. And that's where we're at. Oh, that's from three years ago. Yeah. Interesting. So the main thing is like Asia and India mm-hmm. and then that European region. Just that middle part. like Well, it's the Silk Road. That's the yeah. established trade routes where all a lot of the wars before Alexander the Great, all these the Mongols and stuff traveled along there. Well, even then, like you're saying, it's like the whole information thing. Like that was that version of the internet back then. The Silk Road was like that version okay. of like. Drawing some parallels here. Yeah. And then obviously 2000, internet, widespread. Yeah, it's very, very interesting because obviously with the information, people become better improved. Like, oh, did you hear what they're doing over here? Efficiency, yeah. yeah. It's, it's efficiency in, in living and Trading ideas standards. and information, yeah. So, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's crazy to think about. And we're having a discussion before about economies and mm-hmm. really the U.S. hasn't been around. We, everyone looks at the U.S. as like the biggest, best country ever. It might be 
the truth, but there hasn't, there's not a thousand years of evidence to justify or to prove that like it's got staying power. Mm -hmm. Like these other regions, Constantinople, Greece, Rome, China, they might have, uh, I guess, not the, it's no point putting that on now. They might not have the biggest economic, um, like, like prowess and yeah. stuff like that, but there's evidence that their culture and the way they do things has lasted that long for a while. Um, but it could just be a gigantic US bubble for 200 years and then it pops like the rest of them. Who yeah. knows? No, 100%. Like, anyway. it's just crazy. A lot can happen in literally 100 years or 200 years. And a lot can happen in the next seven days before the next podcast. Yeah, that's comes true. Out. Little, maybe a little too much. We'll see you guys next week. That was a nice short one. The dog's yeah. barking. I'm going to wrap it up now. I know. Thanks, everybody. See ya. See you guys. Bye.